Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this and this will probably be recognisable to quite a few of my subscribers, quite a few of the viewers. Uh, this is a Cromwell helmet, uh, colloquially known as a Cromwell helmet uh, and it's actually an anti-riot helmet introduced by the British Army for use in Northern Ireland. Now, these would appear in the late 1970s, um, they've been preceded by a slightly earlier example which was known as the stadium helmet and they are an attempt to provide a much more purpose designed a uh, much more suitable anti-riot helmet than the Mark IV fitted with the riot visor which we've looked at already on the channel. And the problems with that were discussed in that video in terms of being top heavy, heavy and unwieldy uh, when worn with a visor. And this is a much better uh, design from that point of view. Uh, it comes down and protects the ears and protects the back of the neck uh, to some degree. Um, it does cut down your hearing quite considerably so it really is only of use as an anti-riot helmet. It's made of GRP uh, and again um, because of the tactical issues with that of restricting your hearing and so forth its use was restricted to specific anti-riot duties essentially. Um, obviously pivoting visor on the front if we lift this up here this is essentially as we'll look, see when we look at the labelling a period motorcycle helmet adapted for anti-riot use. Um, you can see there are a few chips and knocks and things in it here it has been in use it's seen a few things I'm sure um, and uh, as I say they were quite effective uh, this is dated 1979, so it is a, a late 70s example. And they were worn through into the 1980s when, of course, the riot visor fitted Mark VI would be introduced. Um, in terms of design, as I say, a GRP shell, you've got this edging around the side here. If we look inside, and sadly this has lost most of its internal padding as they often do, there should be foam padding in here which is all crumbled away. And you can see the glue marks in the, in the top there where that should have been. Uh, but there's a polystyrene uh, lining inside and there's still a little bit of the brow pad left as well so there's a the padded area around the brow you can still wear it um, but it's not uh, it's not as it should be um, that's often the case though the foam lining degrades and, and crumbles away the strap the uh, chin strap as you can see is it vinyl down to here and then you have a nylon uh, webbing strap with a friction buckle there um, the chin cup is a reproduction little bit of Star Wars trivia, uh, this design of helmet was used as the basis for Boba Fett's helmet, Mandalorian helmet, and as such, uh, thankfully, Star Wars um, uh, costumiers uh, have reproduced the chin cup from these because uh, Boba Fett's helmet had one of these chin cups. This is actually a 3D printed example, uh, made in hard plastic, it would originally have been soft, but it does mean I've got the right pattern of chin cup on the helmet. This was lacking one when it when it arrived. So uh, that's a nice feature to be able to replace, even though it's not the right sort of plastic, at least it looks correct uh, when I have it on a, a, a polystyrene head or when I'm wearing it. You can see here there's a bump stop at the front for the visor. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the screws on the visor uh, interfere with this. Uh, I'm not quite sure if the visor's been dinted at some point, but I don't know if you can see in there, I don't know if the, you'll be able to get in the angle, the screw is actually resting on there rather than the bump stop on the visor. Um, but there it is. You've got a Perspex visor uh, on a frame around the top here, which I believe is aluminium. And then it pivots at each side and it has these spring, uh, spring loaded catches. So if you want to, you can just pull that pin and put it in line with the, the pin and the, the visor will just uh, come off there. And there's a spring inside there. I don't know if you'll be able to see, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Uh, but that gives some tension to the, that gives a bit of friction to the movement of the visor and means it's it's not just free floating there is a bit of uh, resistance when you move it um, so uh, it doesn't just rock around so once it's down and gravity's holding it in place there's a bit of friction there holding it down as well of course you can wear it there's bump stops on each side so you can wear it back like that more comfortably um, as i say a far better anti-riot helmet design uh, far better on the head far far more stable on the head uh, and much better protection as well um, for the head all round from blows uh, with blunt instruments, which is obviously the purpose of a riot, the purpose of a riot helmet. So uh, that's basically a look over this. One other feature to note on the side here, you do have the sizing, but again, that's duplicated on the label, which we'll have a look at in a minute. But you can see it's a size three, and you have that in both metric and imperial. So it would have been a size what seven and one eighth to seven and one quarter, or a fifty eight to fifty nine. So you have both metric and imperial on the side there. Um, but as I say, that is a brief look over the Cromwell anti-riot helmet. We'll have a look at the labelling now. As you can see, there are two labels inside the helmet. Um, one identifies this as a motorcyclist's helmet and gives the NATO stock number, and then the contract number, and then size 3. And as you can see, there's room to write the wearer's name, and then 
the date of 1979. And then the style is anti-riot. And again, the size is given as size three. And then the recommended size range is seven and one eighth to seven and one quarter. So there we are. That was a look at what I think has to be considered a rather iconic piece of Northern Ireland, uh, British Army Northern Ireland kit, the Cromwell helmet. As I say, um, an adaption to one of the bits of new public order kit that were introduced for the British Army uh, as a result of its duties in Northern Ireland. And quite effective, as I say. Worn from the late 70s through into the 1980s, so uh, quite a nasty period during the Troubles. Um, and as I say, an interesting piece of, of the story there. As you can see, um, there's something of a timeline I have with the Northern Ireland kit, and the, the intention has been to show the development and how the British Army adapted to its role in Northern Ireland. Um, and as I say, I've, I've, this is part of that story, uh, obviously bridging the gap really between the Mark IV with its riot visor and the Mark VI with a riot visor fitted and the nape protector and so forth. It's part of the story of the development of the anti-riot gear. So uh, I hope you found that interesting, as I always say. If, the like, if you like the channel and you'd like to support it, you can do so through Patreon. Um, and talking of obviously the mannequins and things, I'm probably one of the uh, mannequin of the month options on future polls is going to be something to do with Northern Ireland. And you can vote on those over on Patreon if you subscribe to the corporal tier. Uh, there's also uh, a PayPal link for those who want to make a one-time donation. I really appreciate everyone who supported me through Patreon and through PayPal. It's greatly appreciated, and I want to say thank you very much to everyone for that. Um, if you'd like to obviously see more from the channel, uh, make sure you subscribe and hit the little notification button down below, the little bell, which will alert you when I upload future videos. Um, there's also the Facebook and the Instagram page where I post up photographs uh, from reenacting events, photographs of the mannequins and so forth, uh, if you'd like to see more of that. And there's also down below a uh, email address if you want to make contact with me. I check that uh, inbox at least weekly, so it's a good place to get in touch with me. Um, and, and if you want to ask questions or anything of that nature, good place to do that. Uh, but that's everything for now. So until next time, bye for now.